Upon its release, the 3DO was a state-of-the-art console that used powerful processors to output high-resolution games. Multiple manufacturers made their own version of the 3DO, each with their own differences, but they all had one thing in common. None offered a high-quality RGB output. There's been RGB mods for the 3DO before, but for the first time, there's one in stock that works on almost all models, regardless of what video chip is inside. The 3DO is an interesting console, with many revisions and even different video chips driving the signal. Dan, aka Citrus3000PSI, has just released an RGB mod that's compatible with almost every model, as it taps into the raw video signals before they're processed. This allows him to encode the video on his board, meaning the signal is outputted properly, something that's a problem with most of the original RGB or 240p mods that were available. A great bonus is this mod doesn't require any plastic cutting at all. Simply remove the RF jack and install the board that houses the input DIN and resolution switch in its place for a perfectly clean install. I'd like to focus for a moment on the resolution switch, as this is one of the 3DO mods I've been most interested in over the years. I need to step back for a second and explain what this is though. When the 3DO was released, it was advertised as having higher resolution video. This meant that the console could output at the standard 240p of the time, as well as a 640x480 interlaced resolution, which is the same exact as the TV signals of the era. For whatever reason, all 3DO games ended up being designed to output in 480i, and there was no way to change this. Except in Japan. For whatever reason, certain model Japanese 3DOs had a switch in back labeled A and B. When in mode A, the output is always 480i, but switching to mode B forces a 240p mode. Modders are able to install this switch in most 3DOs, but the hack never quite worked right. My Life in Gaming did a great video about this that I have linked in the description, but in short, sometimes the 240p mod either wouldn't let me boot in 240p, or the image would be shifting wrong and you'd have to play around with it to get it to look right. Dan's mod handles this switching perfectly, allowing you to either always leave it in one place or switch on the fly. A few games end up running too fast in 240p mode, which is a result of the game itself, not the mod. This makes Out of This World impossible to play, and Wolfenstein 3D is annoyingly fast. Not too many games are affected, though. There's another interesting reason that you might want to use the 480i mode, but only when gaming on a CRT. See, while the menus will still be soft and flickery like all interlaced games, any game with full motion video might look more similar to a real TV show, as 480i is the resolution TV shows used to be broadcast at. Switching to 240p will look sharper, and the menus certainly look better, but the video will have that scanline look that Sega CD games had. Honestly, as long as you're using a CRT, just leave it to your preference. If it's not an FMV on a CRT, I'd always suggest playing in 240p though. Here's Gex on a CRT, and while the difference isn't terrible, check out how it looks as a digital capture. The problem is that the interlace flicker kind of blends with the look of the CRT, but on a flat screen, the softness of the image and the flicker are really noticeable. Even FMV should always be played in 240p on a flat screen, as the TV look really doesn't translate well digitally. The mod compatibility is always something that's been an issue with 3DO consoles, and this is by far the most compatible RGB mod yet. There are a few limitations, though. The RGB mod still works with the problematic BT9101 encoders, however the 240p switch will only control the RGB output. On all other compatible chips, flipping the switch will change all outputs between 240p and 480i, but the BT9101 won't output 240p to either the composite or S-Video ports, so you'll get nothing off of those outputs if you switch it to 240p mode. In my opinion, this is a complete non-issue though, because first and foremost, it only applies to 3DOs with that specific chip in it, and also, even if you do have a 3DO with the BT9101 chip, if you've gone through all the trouble to RGB mod your console, you're probably going to be using an RGB output and not ever really using S-Video or composite. I felt it was worth mentioning anyway, though. 
The only real compatibility issues of this 3DO kit is with later models that have the Anvil chip in it, which is a chip that combined a few different chips into one in order to save cost, but none of them output any of the digital signals, meaning no RGB mod would be possible on it. Luckily, the only models with an Anvil chips are the very late model FC10 and the Gold Star GDO202. One last thing to mention is some of the previous RGB mods wouldn't be able to process sync correctly, and the image would end up shifted across the screen. Since Dan's RGB kit is generating the RGB signals from scratch, the problem is completely eliminated. So to sum it all up once again, this 3DO mod is compatible with every single 3DO that can have an RGB mod installed. It doesn't have the sync shift issue. The 240p switch works fine whether you switch back and forth or just leave it in its place. And it's in stock right now and Dan's going to try his best to keep them in stock. Which might be the most important factor for some people as 3DO RGB mods have been impossible to find over the years. So at the moment, that makes this the RGB mod to get for your 3DO if you want to squeeze out the best amount of performance possible from it. Now, I do want to give a shout out to people who have been working on their version of an updated 3DO mod. It looks like they're coming along well, and I'll continue to post their progress on Retro RGB, but with the release of this RGB mod, the bar for quality has been set pretty high. Well, that's it for this time. Everything that was discussed in the video, from sale pages to install guides, are all included in the main post, which of course is linked in the description of this video. Also, if you liked what you saw here, please consider signing up for any of the support services, because it's things like Patreon and Subscribestar that really keep this channel and all the behind the scenes research going. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you're interested, I have a weekly podcast that keeps people in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.